This lecture is going to be about reading JSON. JSON is another file format that's a little bit similar to XML in the sense that it's structured, um, and it's also very commonly used on the internet. So JSON is short for JavaScript Object Notation. It's a uh, lightweight for data storage, and so it's very common in application programming interfaces, which are ways that you can programmatically attack, uh, uh, access the data for uh, companies like Twitter or Facebook through uh, URLs. Uh, similar structure to XML in the sense that it's a structured uh, language, but it's a very different syntax and format. The data are stored as numbers, strings, booleans, arrays, or objects. And so if you want to know a little bit more about JSON, the best place to start, again, as usual, is actually at Wikipedia. This link will take you to a lot more information about JSON. So this is an example JSON file. It actually comes from, uh, this is the API for GitHub, and this is actually the data about the repos that I am uh, contributing to. And so what you can do is uh, go here and look at this file. And so there's a overall curly bracket that rec represents the uh, sort of entire JSON object. And then each of the different repos is inside of its own separate curly bracket. And so each repo has a bunch of variables associated with it. So for example, the ID variable, or the uh, full name of the repo and all of that. And so what you see is the structure of a JSON file is sort of the ID followed by a colon, followed by the, the value of the variable. And so you can have nested uh, sort of structures within. Uh, so for example, an array can be a component of a uh, um, the JSON object. So for example, the owner uh, variable here actually has an array as the value. So you can see there's a colon and then there's another open curly bracket. And then there's a whole bunch of variables like the, my login and the avatar URL and all of that different information. So in R, there's actually a very nice package for reading this data in. It's called the JSON Lite package. So what you do is you actually just take the URL where the JSON appears. So here's that URL. And you pass it to the from JSON function. And what you get out is a data frame, a structured data frame. So if you look at the names of that data frame, it's going to be all the top level variables, things like ID and name and full name and so forth. So one of those variables, as you can see, is owner. So that's one of the components of this data frame. And so if we drill down a little bit and look at um, the names of that particular variable, you see names of JSON data owner. So usually this would uh, access one column of the data frame. And so it turns out you can actually, because of the flexibility of data frames in R, store a data frame within a data frame. So within that um, column, the, the sort of the column of the data set, the, the owner column, there's actually a bunch of other information because you remember owner corresponded to an array of values. And so you get, again, the login, the ID, say the avatar URL and so forth. So we can drill down even further and so we can access, say for example, the login of all the different repos on this particular page. And since we're only looking at the API for my repos, you can see that the login is the same for all of them. It's JT leak in every single case. And so you can see there's one time for every single repo that exists um, in that data set. And so another thing that you can do is actually you can take data sets that are uh, data frames in R. So at one example, the very classic data set, the Iris data set, you can uh, turn it into a JSON data set by saying to JSON. So this is nice if you're going to be exporting data that's going to be used by an API that requires uh, JSON formatted data. So here I've set pretty equal to true, and that will give you nice indentation so it's easy to read the file when you look at it. So if you uh, look at this variable, this variable is now a text variable, and so what we can do is we can use the cat command to print it out, and you can see that it's nicely structured like that. So you can actually take that JSON file we just created, so we took the iris data set, we turned it into a JSON file with the to JSON command, we can then take that text and send it right back to a data frame using the from JSON command. So the interesting thing here is in the first example that we used, it was actually a URL here. We actually passed it a URL for the JSON file. And here we're just passing it a variable name, which corresponds to a text variable that can then be converted into a data frame. So then if we look at the top of that data frame using the head command, we see that you get back the iris data set. So if you just looked at the iris data set by itself, it would look exactly the same as using this uh, file here. So uh, if you want a little bit more information, you can go to json.org. This will give you more information about JSON in general. And then a really nice tutorial on JSON Lite that was the basis for a lot of this lecture is right here at our bloggers. And so you can take that take a look at that. The JSON Lite vignette is also quite good and gives you a lot more information. So if you have a, a more complicated JSON structure that you need to get access to, 
you can go check out those resources and they might give you a little bit more information.